My name is Hamza Youssef and I'm a medical student at UCSF. Today I'm presenting the efficacy of topical capsaicin for the treatment of cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, along with my co-authors, Drs. Curtis Geyer, Alex Dadel, and Juan Carlos Montoy. I have nothing to disclose. Cannabinoid hyperemesis syndrome, or CHS, is a clinical disorder characterized by abdominal pain and intractable nausea and vomiting among patients with chronic marijuana use. These episodes occur for hours to days, typically improve with hot showers, and seize after cannabis use cessation. With the increasing prevalence and potency of cannabis in the United States, along with increased recognition of CHS, it's seen more frequently in emergency departments. Patients are typically given a variety of medications, including analgesics, antiemetics, rehydration, and electrolyte repletion, but usually to little relief. However, topical capsaicin, which is the chemical compound found in chili peppers that makes them hot, has shown promise to be a safe, convenient, and cost-effective treatment in alleviating CHS symptoms. The purpose of our study was to assess the efficacy of topical capsaicin for treating CHS. Specifically, we sought to determine whether a topical capsaicin could reduce the amount of time patients spent in the ED. Materials and methods. In this study, we had 35 patients that received capsaicin and 20 that did not receive capsaicin. At the time of this study, capsaicin was not actually on the hospital formulary, and thus whether patients for whom capsaicin was ordered actually received the treatment depended on whether a clinical pharmacist was working in the ED at the time. We exploited this variation in capsaicin order completion as a natural experiment. Our cohort consisted of patients with suspected CHS for whom capsaicin was ordered, and whether or not they actually received the medication depended on pharmacist staffing at the time. The primary outcome of this study was the time interval from when capsaicin was ordered to the time of patient discharge. Secondary outcomes that we looked at included the total ED length of stay, which was measured from the first medication order to the time of discharge, and this was done to account for the variation in time that patients spent in triage. Additional outcomes included the probability of an inpatient admission, the total number of medications given after capsaicin was ordered, and the number of rounds of medication given after capsaicin was ordered. Results. Ultimately, there was no significant difference in time from capsaicin order to discharge between patients given capsaicin and those not given capsaicin. In this image, there is no difference between the median and interquartile ranges between those given capsaicin and those not given capsaicin. A survival analysis of our primary outcome of time from capsaicin order to discharge also shows that patients who received capsaicin had a non-significantly longer survival time than those that were not given capsaicin. We also utilized a Cox proportional hazard model for the primary outcome and found a hazard ratio of 1.03 for patients that received capsaicin with the p-value of 0.92. Among other medications included in the regression, none had significant hazard ratios. Also, among other outcomes studied, there was no difference in the mean number of medications given after capsaicin was ordered. There was no difference in the bounce back rate to the ED either at 72 or 24 hours. And there was no difference in admission rate to the hospital between patients that were given capsaicin and those that were not. Among the patients that were given capsaicin, we elected to do a subgroup analysis to determine whether there was a difference in time to discharge between patients that were given capsaicin early in their clinical course, which was defined as within the first two rounds of medication, or late in their clinical course, defined as after the first two rounds of medication. Time from the first medication order to discharge was significantly shorter for patients given capsaicin early than for those that were given capsaicin later. We determined that among patients given topical capsaicin, applying the treatment early in the ED visit can reduce the overall length of stay within the ED. This image on the left shows median and interquartile ranges between patients that were given capsaicin early, given capsaicin late, and those that were not given capsaicin. And the image on the right shows a survival analysis between those that were given capsaicin early, late, or not at all. In conclusion, 
Through this retrospective chart review, we sought to describe the efficacy of topical capsaicin in the treatment of CHS in the ED. We found that it was not associated with a shorter length of stay, a lower admission rate, number of medications given, or a bounce back rate to the hospital. We were also unable to determine a benefit with regards to ED length of stay. Given topical capsaicin's relative ease of use, favorable adverse events profile, and route of administration, it would ideally be the treatment of choice for CHS, either at home or in a hospital setting. We attempted to use multiple analysis methods to determine capsaicin's potential effect on ED length of stay, including t-tests, survival analyses, Cox regressions, and linear regressions. None were able to show any significant difference in time to discharge. However, when comparing patients that were given capsaicin early versus those that were given capsaicin late, we found that applying the treatment earlier in the ED can reduce the overall length of an ED visit stay. Thank you.